multiplied by this 2. Okay, that's not that. I have a lot of fun making the integral battles videos for you guys, and hopefully you guys are enjoying it too. And thank you so much for the support, and the comments, and then the thumbs up, and you guys are awesome as well. Here is another one. So as usual, please pause the video and try them out. Alright, as you know, these two integrals are totally different, right? But trust me, I do have a point I want to make in this video, and hopefully by that, we can have a different point of view of working out these integrals once in a while, okay? So let's just work out the first one right here. We have the integral of sin x over x plus ln x times cosine x. And let's just talk about this first. If we don't have this part, if we just have the integral of sin x over x, and let me tell you, we will have no answer for that. No nice answer, I should technically say that. However, when we have the plus ln x times cosine x, if you look at the integral altogether, we will end up with a nice answer, okay? So, uh, how can we do it though? Did you guys use um, integration by parts? If you did, you have to work out the integration by part right here, together do integration by part with that, and somehow things can cancel out nicely, and you can still uh, get the answer at the end, okay? But then substitution wouldn't work, um, yeah. I think those are the only two strategies that you may want to try. But this is the things I want to show you guys. And let's talk about what is integral again. Well, to do an integral, we're pretty much just trying to work out the anti-derivative, right? In another word, we're trying to think about the derivative of what function will give us this right here, right? And if we can come up with the derivative of what function, if we can figure out that, then we can you know, solve this integral, no problem, right? And how many ways are there to take the derivative? We have the power rule, we have the product rule, quotient rule, chain rule, and things like that, right? Power rule is easy, right? And then for the um, chain rule, well, you have the chain rule for derivative, and when you have the integral, you have the u sub to undo the chain rule. Well, in this case, you see that I have two things being added together. That looks like what? I suspect this right here came from the result of the derivative of some function, okay? By the product rule, because I have the addition in between, at two parts. So I am going to take the derivative of some function, and then it's a product of two functions. So I am going to pick up, let's see, for the first part, it suggests me to have sine x. Right? And then I also want to pick up the ln x, so that's multiplied by ln x. And if this is the derivative question, let's do the derivative now. I will keep the first function, which is sine x, times the derivative of the ln x, which is just 1 over x. Aha! And then we add, we keep the second function, which is the ln x, and then we multiply by the derivative of sine x, which is the cosine x. As you can see, this right here is exactly the result of the product rule of the derivative of sine x times ln x. So what does that mean? Well, we must have the answer being sine x times ln x, and then we are done, plus c. That's all. So the point is, if we can recognize an integral as being an anti-derivative an anti-derivative question and this is from the result of a product rule question then you can just kind of construct your answer backwards just like how i'm doing right here guess and check in another word and by the way i'm not making this up okay this is an actual technique okay when you want to solve linear differential equation you want to force it so that this becomes the result of a product rule Okay, and take a guess, where did I get this question from? Maybe you guessed it right? I once again got this from the MIT Integration B. Anyways, that's it. How about this one now, after I have talked about this already? What do you guys think? You want to pause it and try again? Alright, so... This right here was the result of the product rule, so you can suspect this to be what? 
Because I see the denominator, this is something to the second power. It looks like a result of the quotient rule, isn't it? Right? There is a way to do um, integration by parts. And if there's a request, I will try to satisfy that request by working out the integration by part with you guys. However, that's not the point though. The point I want to make right here is that I look at this integral, and this is from the book, so I know it has the answer. But then it looks so much like a quotient rule result. So I'm going to ask myself, this is the derivative of what and what? And hopefully I can get it right the first try. If not, then just try again, okay? All right, so here we go. As you can see, the quotient rule says if you want to differentiate a quotient, you have to square the denominator, right? So that means the original has to be just that without the square. So let's put down 1 plus 2x for the denominator, okay? How about the numerator, though? Well, this is the, uh, just like a polynomial, huh? On the top, I have this e to the 2x person. <laughs> so I'm just going to pick that e to the 2x. That's my top function, and this is my bottom function. And let's try to construct if this is the correct um, derivative equation or not. So let's see. I'm going to differentiate this function. So quotient rule says I'm going to square the denominator. So we have 1 plus 2x and then square, right? And then I'm going to keep the bottom function right here. So 1 plus 2x, and we multiply by the derivative of the top function, which will be e to the 2x. But then we have to remember the chain rule. We have to look for the derivative of 2x, which is the 2. So that's multiplied by right, the 2. And then we further subtract. We keep the top function, which is e to the 2x, and we multiply by the derivative of the bottom. Derivative 1 is 0, derivative 2x is just 2, so we multiply by this 2. Okay, so that. Okay, so this is the result of the um, quotient rule. And we can simplify this a little bit, of course. And I can just distribute this backwards. You see this is 2e to the 2x. We'll take this, multiply with 1, which we get 2e to the 2x. And then this times the 2x, we get plus 4x e to the 2x. And then minus 2e to the 2x all over uh, that, which is the 1 plus 2x raised to the second power, and we see that this and that cancel out exactly, right? And now let's compare. This is the result that we got from this derivative question, but then the original integral question is just x e to the 2x. I don't want to have this 4 in front, so what can we do? This 4 is just a constant multiple, so how about let's just multiply 1 over 4 in the front? If I do that, I just kind of have to put a 1 over 4 in the front. I just have to put the 1 over 4 in the front right here. Uh, I'm done, right? I'm good, because this 1 over 4 will cancel with this 4. So at the end, if we differentiate 1 over 4 times e to the 2x over 1 plus 2x, and perhaps I can put a parenthesis right here, if we differentiate this, we'll end up to be x e to the 2x over that, which is the 1 plus 2x to the second power. And this is exactly our integration question. So what does that mean? It means that the answer to this has to be that. We are done. So let's write it down as e to the 2x over 4, parentheses 1 plus 2x, and we're done, so we put plus C. This is it. So the summary right here is that if you can recognize an integral as a product of equation, backwards, just do it backwards. If this is the result of the quotient rule, and just do it backwards. That's it.